Well, a very good day from HelixTrader.com and uh, welcome along to the technical outlook for March 2013. Well, it's been a very exciting start to the year in many stock markets around the world and uh, there's lots of people feeling very giddy in the head as, uh, as they see their trading accounts swell with their uh, long side stock trades. Uh, but the question is, is the boom set to continue or are the markets now uh, running out of steam? Uh, we'll look at some charts and uh, hopefully get some uh, clarity on the situation. Uh, but uh, as this is the first one of the year, let's uh, have a look at the very long term picture. And uh, it always reminds me of the saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same, as we'll see. Uh, the Dow Jones, of course, uh, going back to 1900, uh, characterized by these uh, long <coughs> sideways consolidation phases and then punctuated by these uh, few breakout moves to the upside, the final one bringing us up to the uh, late 90s there. One thing that is interesting to uh, look at on this chart is that uh, each time we've had one of these breakout moves, it's also always been from a shallower pullback than the deepest pullback within the consolidation phase. Uh, here you can see in the 30s we had the depression low, then it was a shallower pullback before the breakout move. Again in the mid 70s we had that deep, very deep pullback, and then a shallower pullback uh, before the takeoff move. Clearly we've just been through what would what we would hope would be one of the deepest pullbacks in this consolidation phase, that through 2008-2009. Uh, we are just nudging the top of uh, the range again at the moment. <clears throat> And you would say that the uh, the lower probability uh, move from here would be the, the breakout uh, directly from where we are now and a move higher. What we might expect instead is a move to back within the uh, the, the pattern, perhaps you know maybe halfway back to, to where we'd come from. Um, and that would, might ask, act as a, a nice platform for a springboard higher. If we zoom in a bit closer, we can see here through the 70s, there was that uh, deep pullback there and then a bit of volatility a couple of lower uh, uh, troughs before the next move higher. Uh, so here we might expect the market to come back maybe around about 10,000-ish on the Dow. Uh, wouldn't be out of the question and uh, that would uh, provide uh, quite a nice base probably for this market to move higher. And if we look at the inflation adjusted Dow, we can see here that uh, the takeoff moves, which I've circled in green here, have all uh, happened other than the one in the 80s, round about this uh, blue line here. So if we were in line to, to have something similar happen this time, again, it could be around about that 10,000 mark on the Dow where we'd be come back to before the uh, the next breakout move higher. On the PE ratio again, with, uh, this the, this shows the breakout moves here or the starts of the breakout moves, and it, it tells us really that the PE ratio needed to be below around about seven in the past uh, on the S&P 500 for for the the market to then <clears throat> make a, a move uh, to the upside. Uh, at the moment, we're still quite a bit above that, around about uh, the high teens there, um, but. Uh, if if the market did sell off, if the S P 500 did sell off, that would push this ratio down uh, and perhaps uh, low enough to to get a breakout move. Uh, the other alternative, of course, is to uh, is for earnings to to rise relative to to where price is now. So uh, if we got a combination of the both, then uh, that would get us down to to a nice uh, platform to to make the next move higher. So let's now have a look at the US stock market itself and uh, see what the price action there is telling us. Uh, for the monthly chart, of course, you can see we are stuck in this uh, range uh, between the old highs from 2000-2007 and these lows uh, down here. Uh, market obviously just uh, testing resistance right now uh, up at these old high levels. Um, but uh, what you could say is that it's just starting to look a little bit extended to the upside, a little bit overbought perhaps. Uh, my own feeling is that we will push through and maybe just run some of these um, buy stops that are sitting above this level and um, perhaps even up into the 1600s. <clears throat> but from there, uh, we might uh, look at uh, getting a, a deeper pullback. If we look at the weekly chart, we can see this very well behaved uptrend that the market has been in. Just coming up to test those old uh, highs there, 1555, 1575. Again, I think we probably will just push through and just uh, grab all those stops that are sitting up there. 
Um, and from there, if this market does uh, make a deeper pullback, then uh, I think this sort of 1000 to 1100 area would not be out of the question. If it broke these old lows from 2011, uh, that could be a, a, a washout zone, if you like, um, <clears throat> for uh, and uh, that could be that could be the point at which this market then uh, takes off to the upside. That would be around about 50% of the move it's made here. So uh, again, that wouldn't be uh, out of the question at all. And on the Ichimoku chart, what we see, we turned bullish back here in 2009, and it's just been one-way traffic ever since then. We did just get like a small break of the temporary break of the clouds uh, back in 2011, but the blue lagging line itself never looked like it was going under, and it's just stayed uh, higher and higher. Uh, now just uh, quite a distance away from the cloud itself, so again, just looking like it's a little bit overextended there to the upside. And uh, the cloud itself currently around about 1400 to 1445. So if we did get uh, a little bit of a pullback, then that would probably be the uh, the first stop. Um, but one thing to remember, of course, that if this market is starting to put in uh, a, an ultimate top, that 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 is a process, not an event. Uh, and we'll it will only be with hindsight we'll be able to look back and point to where the high was. But normally these markets take many weeks or months to to top out. So uh, there could be a lot of vol volatility in the market swinging up and swinging down in the next few months um, as, the, as the market uh, does its uh, thing and puts its uh, final top for this, uh, this 2009 up move in. On the daily chart, uh, if you watched the last one of these back in November, you'll remember that uh, we were down here and uh, just testing the 200 day moving average and uh, I did say then that I thought that market would hold uh, and uh, move higher and that's what it's done. It's been quite a robust move higher up this uh, this little uptrend line. Again just uh, coming towards resistance there at the old 2000-2007 um, uh, highs um, but still well within this uptrend at the moment so uh, you know we, we've got this uh, currently around about 1500 this uptrend line and moving, up, moving higher all the time so uh, that would certainly be the first port of call on the daily chart um, uh, for this market to come back to. On the point figure chart we do have that intriguing uh, target up there at 1605 so that's just uh, I think the market probably will get there whether it gets there on this current move or whether we see a pullback and then a final push higher um, but uh, that, that I think ultimately is where this market's heading um, and then if it does sell off uh, say mid-year and, and start to head lower from there we've got the trend line support around about 1320 of course that's moving up so um, but that could be where this market come back to initially um, but uh, again I think maybe uh, you know medium term maybe you know late this year or, or perhaps even longer uh, down to the sort of uh, 1000, uh, 1100 area <clears throat> would be uh, quite a nice to see the market come back there. Could be a nice uh, low risk entry point for, for the next move higher. So let's now have a look at some of the US market internals and uh, those leading indicators and, and see what it says about the, uh, the current state of the market health. First one is uh, technology, uh, of course always a leading indicator of the broader market and as we can see here it is well above its old 2007 high which is circled here. Just nudging up against its 50% uh, retracement of the dot com bust. Uh, just having a third attempt at that at the moment, just could just be seeing the market just losing a little bit of momentum here. Uh, you could argue even perhaps like a little uh, head and shoulders maybe forming here. Um, so, uh, but if this market does sell off, uh, first of all, it would have to overcome its uh, uptrend line there. Um, but I think uh, if it came back to the old breakout point at the old 07 highs around about 2250, I think that would be quite healthy for this market, and uh, and that could be the the point where it uh, makes its mix, next move up. But broadly, this is uh, bullish for the broader market because. Uh, uh, ultimately, this should pull the S&P 500 and the Dow, for that matter, through the, their old uh, 2007 highs. Now, on the point and figure for the Nasdaq, we have a long-term target up there at 40.50. Uh, we do have a short-term one there at 1950. I think it would be a surprise if the market went back that far, maybe just back into this little congestion area here, which would be near the old breakout point, uh, which is sitting there. 
uh, then uh, and but still very much bullish obviously turned bullish back here in 2010 and it's been bullish ever since all these uptrend lines intact uh, so uh, it would take uh, quite a bit for for uh, this to turn bullish. Uh, 1950 is also the uh, point where the uptrend, the ultimate uptrend line is at two. And the small caps, uh, the Russell 2000 here, also clearly through its uh, old 2007 highs, which is circled back there. Uh, that's also uh, bullish for the broader market. Uh, shows shows relative strength, um, but uh, again, just looking maybe a little bit overextended to the upside, um, we could just see that consolidate and maybe come back to the breakout point or even a deeper pullback to the old triangle breakout. I don't think we'd do too much technical damage to this uh, market, uh, but again, uh, very bullish for the broader market, and uh, ultimately that should pull the uh, the, the S and P 500 through its old 07 highs. And on the financials, well, this saying goes that you can't have a bull market without the financials being um, uh, being involved or participating. And uh, this is the XLF, uh, which is the U.S. Um, financials ETF. And uh, we can see it got quite badly damaged here during the financial crisis. And since then, just been consolidating, uh, building a bit of strength. And uh, then just since the start of this year, we have just seen a little bit of a breakout above the um, uh, the consolidation area just nudging up against its old 38% retracement uh, level so again this is bullish for the broader market but also just maybe starting to look a little bit extended to the upside and uh, we could see that either just consolidate at these levels or, or even pull pull back a little bit and on the bonds well the bonds of course normally move inverse to the uh, stock market uh, uh, but if you remember back from November, we were watching this curious situation where bonds and stocks were both rising uh, together, uh, you know, perhaps due to quantitative easing. Um, but uh, but the point was that that wasn't going to last forever and what either stocks or bonds would have to give in. Uh, and here it looks like the stocks have won the day and uh, the bonds have started to, to cave in to the downside. Um, it's probably also worth mentioning that uh, many commentators are talking about this being a generational high in the price of bonds. Uh, here's one forecaster looking at uh, a, perhaps a 50% fall into 2015 for the bond price. Uh, and of course, bond price falling means yields rising, and for that you can read uh, interest rates rising as well. So, so it perhaps seems like we could be entering a period of uh, higher interest rates uh, than we have seen uh, in the past few years. On the volume, so here the red and black line is the S&P 500 and the solid black line is volume. Uh, again, if you remember back from November, market was falling uh, uh, quite sharply, in fact, and uh, but the, the volume wasn't. The volume was just uh, holding up and that told us there were buyers in this market uh, and that uh, should have the ultimate effect of moving the market higher and uh, that is exactly what we've had. Uh, and right now we're seeing uh, volume in lockstep really with the price and that's a good sign for the market short term. What will be more interesting uh, on this chart is uh, when, this, when the market uh, S&P 500 eventually does pull back, if it makes another push higher from there, uh, it'd be very interesting to watch what the volume does. If the volume starts to dry up at that point, then that could be telling us that uh, the market is uh, perhaps putting in its final top for the move and uh, that could be a sign to uh, start being a bit more cautious on the long side of this market. The bullish percent index uh, measures the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 which are bullish at any one time. Here we can see back in 2011 uh, the bullish percent measure falling while the market was uh, rising and uh, that told us that uh, it wasn't going to last. The market was perhaps topping and we got this uh, uh, we got this uh, deep pullback uh, back in August of uh, 2011. Uh, we're now seeing something similar. Market, obviously, this is the S&P 500 in this bottom pane here. Market making higher highs. Uh, the bullish percent making the lower highs. Uh, but not quite as dramatic as we saw back in 2011. So this tells me that maybe this market has got just a little bit more to, uh, to run. And uh, what we might, what will be interesting, uh, like the volume, is when this market pulls back and if it makes another move higher, uh, if the bullish percent puts in a lower high, uh, again that will be a, 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 a that will be a signal to uh, to exercise a bit more caution on the long side. The put call ratio ratio to puts and calls and. Uh, 
uh, as you can see, where uh, the market has been topping and uh, or screaming higher, I should say, the uh, people have been panic buying calls. That pushes this ratio down into this uh, bullish extreme here. So we did get a top there back in 2010. 2011, uh, it wasn't the ultimate top. It was actually the, the, the bullish extreme on the put call came early and the ultimate top was where this other red circle is. Uh, where the uh, book call put in a higher low, but the point was we had already had that extreme which told us we were near the top. Uh, looking at the right hand edge, we haven't really had any excursion down into this bullish extreme area. The market, uh, the book, uh, put call ratio, I should say, is uh, is well is really just sitting in the middle of the range and uh, is looking quite neutral at the moment. So uh, again, that shows us that the market's probably not just there at the top yet. Um, but if we started to see a lot of volatility come into this market and uh, the market shooting higher, uh, that could be the signal for the panic buying of calls. Uh, and again, that uh, is usually a contraindicator uh, to that it's telling us the market could be near its top. On the volatility index, of course, high volatility means uh, the market usually bottoms. Low volatility is complacency and usually a sign where the market tops out. Uh, what's interesting on this chart is that each time the, the S&P 500, which is down here at the bottom, has topped, uh, we've seen this happen at lower and lower levels on the VIX each time. We're now down uh, below 12 on the, on the VIX, and that's getting towards uh, the levels that we saw uh, back at the 2007 top where the VIX got down to around about 10 so uh, so we're definitely closer to the end than the beginning uh, but uh, still got a little bit of room to move on the on the downside the VIX so uh, again as we see perhaps some volatility come into this market as it begins to top uh, we'll see this uh, this measure falling further and uh, just a couple of cycle projections here the summation of all the Historic S&P uh, up legs puts a, a medium target for this move up around 1690. So uh, that's that being the average. Of course, we could come in below or above that. My own feeling is that we will get above 1600 um, before any significant sell-off. Um, but uh, that would uh, that would be in line with what we saw earlier on the point and figure chart, certainly. And on the great cycle, uh, this is the 60-year cycle overlay. It's pointing to uh, quite a big, a major low in 2013. Uh, later in 2013, uh, and followed the, then by uh, a could be a hundred, hundred and four percent advance uh, up into late 2015. So probably a bit too early to say whether that's going to eventuate. But but a low, uh, a major low in late 2013, I think, is not out of the question given the maturity of this up leg and given where we are. Uh, hitting uh, major resistance at the at the top of the consolidation zone, and um, so uh, this will be one to keep an eye on. But uh, if we do get that low in late 2013, that could well be a springboard for a for a, a move higher. Another cycle um, people like to follow is the so-called decade cycle. This is the average of what's happened in uh, all the years since the late 1800s on the Dow. For each year within the decade, uh, years ending in zero, one, two, three, up to nine. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, here we can see that year three does tend to be choppy, so that would be 2013, uh, perhaps ending a little bit higher. But uh, years four and five are really where most of the money has been made historically. So if we can get through 2013 with a bit of volatility, even perhaps a deeper pullback, then uh, 2014 and 2015 look like they could be uh, quite lucrative. And if the market does top out in the next couple of months, uh, it could be towards that May time. And uh, there's an old saying in uh, in Wall Street that you should sell in May and go away. But uh, I've never really seen any statistics to back that up. So I decided to put it to the test myself. And uh, I devised a little system uh, using Amy Broker, which, uh, which bought the market in every uh, month of every year and then sold it the following year in every other month. And, and this is what the, the various profits uh, ended up with. And here you can see that uh, buying the market uh, late in the year and then selling it mid-year the following year does seem to be the most uh, uh, lucrative uh, uh, way to, to uh, trade the market. Uh, but having said that, there's an equally large uh, peak back here uh, by buying the market uh, early in the year and selling the market early in the year, uh, sometimes also known as buy and hold. Uh, but of course, this is just based on net profit. It doesn't show you what the drawdown would have been. 
And if we chart those uh, both those up, we can see that by October, sell in May uh, would have kept you out of a lot of the major volatility that's happened in the market. By March, sell in Feb, which is much more of the sort of buy and hold, you would have. Uh, you would have made the same amount of money, but uh, but you would have had to sit through a lot more volatility uh, to get there. Um, but uh, having said that, for both these strategies, most of the money was made before the year 2000, and since then, it's really been a fairly fairly ordinary um, to strategy, sideways to up at best. <clears throat> All you could say is uh, selling in May and buying in October would have probably protected you from uh, much of the uh, the market volatility that's gone on. So the U.S. stock market, summarizing that uh, trend, still up for now, uh, but starting to just look a little bit overbought on the upside. And uh, with resistance, major resistance up ahead, we could be uh, perhaps seeing the start of, uh, of a major top uh, forming. But uh, like I said, it's a process, not an event. And uh, that could take uh, quite a few weeks or even a few months uh, to, to unfold in front of us. Longer term, though, the market is overall bullish, uh, but uh, if we see uh, a pullback, maybe even a deeper pullback to 1,100 on the S&P, that could be the sort of uh, sp springboard that this market needs to make the next move higher. If you're not already signed up to my, my website, helixtrader.com, is where I'll post all my um, uh, market analysis and uh, trading insights. Uh, feel free to uh, subscribe if you haven't already, uh, or, or indeed uh, pass on the uh, the invite uh, to your friends and colleagues. And feel free to also share this video uh, if you find it's been any use to you. And with that, I will thank you and bid you good day and good trading.